Good morning, everyone. Today is July the 12th, 2024. This is your thought for today. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, as always, we thank you for bringing us together as a family. We pray that your Holy Spirit will guide and direct us. We thank you for what we all shall experience for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good Friday to everybody. I pray that you had a wonderful week. I cannot wait until this work day is over and I can relax and just enjoy this weekend that is ahead of us. Uh, I want to read a few definitions for you before we begin. Uh, our thought for today. The first definition goes like this. Selected from several. Preferred. The next definition says by, through, or as a result of an appointment. The last one says chosen by vote as for an office chosen by vote as for an office today our thought for today is one word chosen 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 so the first definition that i share with you is a definition of chosen it means selected from several preferred Appointed was the second definition that says by or through or as a result of an appointment. But another word that is in contrast to appointed is elected. And I read that one to you and it is chosen by vote as for an office. I just want to tell you from the very beginning that you and I have been chosen. We have been handpicked by a vote from the Godhead to be in the positions that we find ourselves in today. And when God sees fit to remove us from where we are and send us to our next assignment, he will do it. Someone needs to hear that today because you, 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 you probably think it's because of the fact that you was networking with someone and this is the reason behind you being in that particular field that you're in. But I would suggest to you that God put inside of your heart when you was a young man or a young woman what your calling or what your vocation or what your work was going to be before. Before you had that interview, I want to look at three verses and then I'm going to go to the fourth one where we're going to focus on the most this morning. The first one I want you to understand is in Romans chapter one and verse number one. It says this. This letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. Now, some of you may not know the history of Paul. Actually, his name wasn't Paul at all. His name was changed from uh, uh, Saul to Paul. For you see, Saul was a murderer of believers of the way. Who is the way? Jesus Christ is. Because Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So, there was a time in Paul's life where he was doing things that he truly believed was the right thing. But then he had an experience. Uh, I would say he had a, a, a road uh, to Damascus experience where Jesus Christ changed everything. He, he changed his life. So now he was no longer called Saul. He became known as 
Paul, Paul the Apostle. And if you continue to look at uh, 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 when, when, when Paul is talking in the New Testament, he often says that he was appointed. Appointed. When you are appointed, as we just discovered, is by, through, or as a result of an appointment. But I like the elected definition because that's in the contrast to appointed. Chosen by vote. Asked for an office. So the Godhead said, yes, we understand that Saul was doing this thing out of ignorance, but we have chosen him as our instrument to tell the Gentiles about Jesus Christ. See, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles, but I would suggest to you he was the apostle to everybody. So some of you may be thinking right now, why am I in this particular field of study? I would suggest to you that maybe you're in that particular field of study is because God handpicked you to be his representative there. So, so change your mindset now, shift your mindset and begin to understand that there's a story for you to tell. Let me go ahead and start our first quote right here. Let's go ahead. Our first quote is this, and I want you to understand this. Don't be ashamed of your story. Oh, yes. Don't be ashamed of your story uh, because it will inspire others. I said it may inspire others. It, there's a possibility that it. No, no. Your story will inspire others. Why? Because someone else has a story, too. But, you know, the connecting tissue to both of our stories is that we made it. Come on now. We made it through our stories. Oh, thank the Lord, somebody. We made it through our stories because I read somewhere that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to those that endure till the end. Our next scripture that I want us to look at before we go to our main text. Okay. Bear with me, y'all. My, my stuff isn't trying to work with me. Come on now. Let me say a short prayer. Father in heaven, you know what we're doing right now. Pray that everything will begin to work right. Before I got on this video, everything was going perfectly. So may your spirit continue to be in our midst and continue to abide for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Sometimes y'all got to do that. When you know you're doing something that the Lord would have you do, confusion is always around. Next thing I want us to look at is uh, Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse number 17. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse number 17. This is what Ezekiel. Maybe I need to take this out of here. And this is the reason why we keep having these issues. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse number 17. Okay. All right. Let me get out of here. Thank you so much for your patience, everybody. Ezekiel chapter 3. And verse number 17. Um, let me just share something with you guys before this starts working again. 
I want to tell you, whenever you are preparing for something, I don't know what it is, basketball game, going to church, or whatever the case may be, it seems as if all kind of stuff starts happening. And you don't understand why. You're, you're, you're asking yourself, why is this happening? Because normally, um, you may be on time for something, but for some strange reason, when you're leaving out the house sometimes, you find yourself leaving out the house um, later than you expected. But then you discover the reason for you leaving that house at the time that you left it is because something had went down that you wasn't aware of. And God kept you from that disaster. I'm looking at this thing right now and I'm sitting here wondering why is this happening? And I think the reason why it's happening is because What's being presented today is exactly what you all need to hear. Good morning, Dad. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 17 says this. Son of man, I have appointed you as a watchman for Israel. Whenever you receive a message from me, warn people immediately. This text clearly says to us that this Jesus, God is speaking to Ezekiel and he's telling Ezekiel, listen, Ezekiel, I have appointed you to be the watchman of Israel. I have appointed you to be the one that stands between uh, 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 the people and me, kind of like Moses. He was the deliverer, the, 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 the one that God chose to to be the one that was going to go to Egypt and to bring the people to that promised land. Yes. And so in this text, God is speaking through Ezekiel and he's saying, I've appointed you as a watchman for Israel. And this is what I want you to do. This is your marching orders. I want you to tell these people, I want you to warn them of what is about to take place. If you read Ezekiel chapter three, as a matter of fact, read the whole chapter, you will, uh, the whole book, you would discover that there are warnings laced throughout that chapter because God is telling them of what is going to happen as a result of their backsliding. But if they turn back to God, what will happen as a result of them turning back to God? Daniel chapter 2 verse 49 says this, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be in charge of all the affairs of the providence of Babylon while Daniel remained in the king's court. We're focusing on that word appointed, selected, elected for a specific purpose. You have been voted. I have been voted to be God's representatives. So we don't need to be ashamed. Because if God called you to it, he's going to equip you with everything that you need to fulfill the mission that he has entrusted to you. Because check this out. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God. That's who it's all about. Did Jesus see the importance of this, these words chosen and appointed and elected? Of course he did. Let's look at Matthew. Matthew. Let's look at John chapter 15. Jesus starts off saying, I've loved you. Even as the Father has loved me, remain in my love. That, that, that's how it starts off. Remain in my love. It's all about love, everybody. When you obey my commandments, listen to this, 
you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. This is a love relationship right here, everybody. Good morning, Sister Kelly, Brother Kelly. Uh, this is a love relationship that we're in right now. I have told you these things so you will be filled with my joy. Mm -hmm. Yes, your joy will overflow. So when we love, when we have God's love inside of us, we will be filled and it will overflow to where not only will we experience it, but others will experience it too. Yes, this commandment, this is my commandment, love each other in the same way I have loved you what do you mean? That means to forgive my brother and sister when they do me wrong. Yes, love like that. That means when someone does me wrong, love them like that. Yes, that's what that means. That's how Jesus loves because Jesus will help you to love that person that in your mind is unlovable. Yes, he will help you forgive that person that's in your mind unforgivable. Yes. There is no greater love. No, no, no. I skipped the main, uh, 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 the, the second verse. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same. Oh, I read that. But I, uh, repetition deepens the impression. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. 13. There is no greater love than this. Ooh, than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You know, certain words we shouldn't use lightly. Love should not be a word that we use lightly. And friends should not be a word we use lightly. We should mean it. We should mean it when we say we love. We should mean it when we say this person is a friend. You are my friends. This is Jesus saying now, if you do what I command. Really? So I need to, uh, uh, you want me to love as you love me. Love my brother, abide in this love, lay down my life for my friend. That's what you want me to do? Yes. Can you do it in your strength? No, you can't. I can't either. But we can do it through God's strength. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves. Because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Just listen to the wording here. Jesus is making a point. Now you are my friends. He's giving you a distinction. Now you have graduated. Now uh, we graduate in our relationship with God. It's a constant growth. It's a progressive growth. We don't stay down here. We continue to uplift, be uplifted by God. I didn't say uplift or or or, or 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 step on your brother's neck to get uplifted. I said Jesus uplifts us when we follow His commands. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confine his slaves. Now you are my friends. Since I have told you everything the Father told me, listen right here. This is a pun. This is the thing that I want you to know. This is the thing that I want you to remember. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Come on now. Come on. I'm getting happy. I'm getting happy. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. Sister Kelly, you've been chosen. You've been appointed. Brother Kelly, you've been chosen. You've been appointed. Dad, you've been chosen. Appointed. God looked at you and he said, you know what? I want Robert White Jr. to be my deacon. Yes, I want him to be a praying man. Yes, I, I, I've anointed Sister uh, Una Kelly. I, I, I want her to be my, my singing daughter to, to men and women and boys and girls. And good morning to the one who just came on. I, I've appointed her to be the help me to her husband, Bernard Kelly. I know I'm name dropping, but that's okay. Sometimes you got a name drop because people need to understand that you're not just talking. Remember 
There was a time when a person would come and say, hey, can you pray for me? And you would say, I pray for you. And you forgot the moment they said, can you pray for me? Because life began to happen. So sometimes you need to call people's name out right then and there while it's fresh in your mind because they probably need to know that somebody knows their name. God knows your name. He knows everything about you. You see all this hair on my head? He knows every single hair that's on my head right now. Guess what? It's going to get cut off today. Next time you see me, it's going to be different. What I want you to understand that you didn't, that, 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 uh, 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 I want us to go back to what Jesus said. You didn't choose me. We don't choose God. God chooses us. He, he chooses us. We don't know what we need to do in this life. God knows what we need to do in this life. We, some of us just want to make money. Guess what? That's all the money you're going to ever make if you just focus in your attention. Come on now, Matthew. <sighs> Lay not yourself treasures here on earth where moth and rust doth destroy, but set your affection, set your sight, set your treasures on heaven where rust does not corrupt. Where thieves don't break in and steal. Come on now, somebody. You need to understand that you need to hold on to God's unchanging hand. The song says, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. I understand that it's going to get rough. I understand that it's going to get tough. But you need to stand Firm. Remain in his love. It's all about love, everybody. You have been chosen. You have been chosen to love. You have been chosen to serve. You have been chosen to tell your story. I'm going to say it again. Don't be ashamed of your story. It will inspire others. They'll look at you when you tell your story and say, I didn't know that you went through that. You don't even look like what you went through. Guess what? You don't look like what you went through. Guess what? I don't look like what I went through. If I told you some of the stories, some of the experiences that I have made it from, you're going to sit here and say, what? You made it through that? Yes, I did. How did you do it? Because I had a God. I had a village praying for me. See, we done got out of the village mentality. It's every man for himself. Survivor of the fittest. That's what it is. You need to get back to the basics. I need to... Listen, what I'm saying to you, I've said to myself. You know, God talks to you, right? If you listen, if you if you open up your heart and your mind and your spirit, yeah, he'll talk to you. He'll tell you what to... Listen, remember the text I just got done quoting for you. Isaiah 3.17, Son of man, I've appointed you as a watchman. Whenever you receive a message from me, warn people immediately. God has been telling y'all to do something. And you ain't been listening. Well, I'm here to tell you as God's representative, start listening. He's trying to take you to a next level, everybody. You sick of being where you are? Start following his commandments. And people can talk about you. They can say whatever they want about you. So what? They talked about Jesus, didn't they? But he stood firm. He stood fast. So in the end, I want you to remember this, and I'm going to go to this last quote. I'm going to pray with you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. So wherever you go, wherever your feet touch, God is going to use you because you are doing the Lord's work. So that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. Uh-oh. Come on now. 
The power is not only in the fact that you have been appointed, but the power is in the fact that you going in his name. You're not going in Sister Kelly's name. You're not going in Bernard's name. You're not going in Robert's name and my other friend that's on here. You're not going in that name, my dad. You're not going in that name. You're going in God's name. So when you go in God's name, God is going to equip you and give you everything you need for the journey, for the mission. I end with this quote. Hey, you. Say it to yourself. Hey, you. Stay positive. The things you are waiting and hoping for tend to arrive at the most unexpected moments. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for watching over us today. Bless us as we continue to go throughout this day. Help us to understand that we have been appointed. We have been chosen. To fulfill your mission, to tell our story, to inspire others, to be a help to everyone that we encounter. And yes, we know that that old snake, that old serpent, that old dragon is going to try to come. But we understand that we have the power of the Holy Spirit by our side. So continue to lead, guide, and direct. Us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful weekend and remember that you have been chosen.